Hello everyone, uh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, my name is Eugene and I work for a company called ALF Works. Um, many of you might have heard about us by the name of our uh, core app called Structure for Jura. Uh, and today I want to talk a little bit about uh, managing projects at scale, some of the challenges that uh, people face, uh, some of the available solutions and also show in a few more details uh, what we have to offer in that regard um, so that you can get some understanding. So let's start uh, by discussing what is the actual challenge we are trying to solve. So we all know Jira works great for individual teams. Uh, it offers all the nice features. You have scrum boards, Kanban boards. So depending on how you run your process, um, you have uh, all the tools you need. You have nice reports. Um, the challenge is when you have multiple teams to manage, when you have 10 or 20 teams that you need to oversee, um, it's becoming a bit more problematic. Uh, it's hard to oversee the entire scope of work in a large project. It's hard to understand which team is actually hindering the progress of the project and uh, which particular task maybe are delayed. Um, it's also difficult for the teams themselves to understand uh, which initiatives they are contributing to and uh, it's really hard for them to see the, um, sort of the big picture, the entire scope of the project they are working on. It's harder to track the dependencies between the teams. So uh, for all those things, uh, we normally see people, they can try to find some work around in Jira itself, but usually uh, people would go for some other solutions. So there are several options that you have. You have the third-party tools uh, that might be designed specifically for project management and portfolio management that uh, integrate with Jira. Most of them do these days. Um, but this approach has a few disadvantages too. So uh, the first is that it's actually a little bit more disconnected. The development teams are more disconnected from the business teams. Uh, maybe it's not as crucial for business because they do get updates from uh, from the dev teams coming into their system uh, but for the teams it's harder to see what initiatives they're working on how they're aligned with those initiatives um, another option is using one of the apps available for Jira specifically then you have everything in Jira and um, there are three most common solutions that we see people use uh, they are Portfolio for Jira by Atlassian, uh, which uh, has just released the new major version. Uh, we didn't have time to look at it closer, so we'll be providing some updates on uh, how we are different from them. That's a frequently asked questions, but we're not going to discuss this right now. Um, there is Big Picture, also a very popular tool. They are also solving a similar problem, but uh, they have their own approach to many things and then there is um, our own product structure for Jira and structure to um, and um, I want to talk a little bit more uh, about the approach we use uh, to managing projects at scale so to show you I want to show you some basic principles of the tools and uh, to do that I want to use a fairly common example uh, that we see a lot. I would say it's probably 80% of our customers do something similar to that uh, when we're talking about uh, managing large-scale projects. So the setup is the following. Usually uh, people would have multiple teams and those teams might be they would usually have separate projects in Jira or maybe have some other way to distinguish between the teams. Uh, sometimes people use components and the teams would have their own scrum boards. Uh, then the epics from those scrum boards might be individual for the teams, but we often see when they're shared between the boards. Uh, and then the epics might exist in the program level Kanban board. And then so the epics are implemented by stories, which are distributed between teams, but there is a person managing epics. Um, and then uh, usually in a large project, you would end up with a, really large number of epics so it's really hard to manage them when they're just one big list and usually you need to organize them somehow so people would introduce the level above the epics and call it initiatives or themes 
and uh, it can be either a special issue type or a separate project so it really depends on, on the way uh, things are organized uh, in a specific company and people would connect somehow this initiative to the epics usually uh, just using the standard Jira link but it's always a good idea to decide which specific link type you use for connecting your initiatives to the epics and of course it can grow upwards uh, to uh, whatever level you may need depending on the size of the project we have some customers who would have nine levels of the hierarchy because they would have maybe four levels which are specific for the business and then uh, go down into development teams levels and so it really depends on the complexity and for, for our tool, it doesn't really matter uh, how large is the scope and how many levels you have. So um, we have all that set up in Jira, the different issue types, the projects, and they are connected with links. Uh, the tricky part now is to visualize this whole thing because uh, Jira doesn't give you easy way to do it. You can look at the initiative and see what are the epics underneath the initiative, but you can't see what are the stories and you can't see the data coming from the stories like the hours logged and the progress etc etc so structure allows you to solve that problem really easily so let's take a look uh, at how it works in practice so um, once you install the structure you get another menu item in your Jira through which you can access your structures you can create as many structures as you need for different purposes uh, so this one will be the one we're building now will be the overview of uh, our large project So we give it a name we can decide if we want to share it with other people or we want to keep it private And now we are actually building the structure to do that we use the automation mechanism which Basically allows you to define a number of rules based on which our hierarchy will be built and there are several types of rules we can insert something into our structure for example, some issues from an Agile board or results of a jQuery query. So by adding this rule, we basically tell the structure to put certain issues on the top level. In this case, we are pulling in issues from the project where we keep our initiatives. And you see, once we add the rule, structure gets automatically populated with the initiatives. The next step is to visualize what's linked to these initiatives. And for that, we use another type of the rule, extender and we just select which Jira link type we want to visualize and once we add the rule you can see that the epics get pulled in under their corresponding initiatives and in a similar fashion we can pull in the uh, stories under the epics and then the subtasks under the stories so as you can see there is no um, sort of strict definition uh, what links you need to use, how you need to connect things, how many levels you just need to have. You just uh, build your structure based on the Jira data that you have by choosing appropriate rules. And then you can, for example, sort everything by rank to get everything aligned with your prioritization in Jira. Uh, so once you've built your hierarchy, uh, you can visualize all kinds of valuable data for it. Uh, so first of all you can show all Jira fields like assignee, status, uh, but apart from that we have a number of structure specific columns uh, that can be really useful. So first uh, column we are looking at is progress which is a really customizable column which aggregates progress bottom up so it can take, uh, imagine your logging time and tracking progress on the story level and subtask level uh, we can set it up to aggregate that up all the way to initiative level, even though we don't do any workloads there. Or maybe just we can story points and uh, track the closed versus open. Uh, we can also do aggregations for any numeric fields, as you can see here. So see the total remaining estimate, for example, total story points. But we also have a feature that allows you to do more complex calculations, Excel-like formulas, and it's called the feature is called formulas and as you can see you can define your own uh, formula for calculating some important metrics and the best part is all updated in real time so what you are seeing here is uh, based on your real life data in Jira and once you build this hierarchy you can show it uh, you can see it here but you can also put it on dashboards 
Uh, you can see it in Confluence pages. So if you have some kind of status page, you can put the hierarchy like this there and get all the essential information on that page. And this is, again, just one example. You can actually build all kinds of views for the same sets of issues, slice and dice them any way you want. We have groupers, so we can visualize issues broken down by, for example, sprints and fixed versions and get all the calculations for those groups. So it's really about finding the use case and implementing it. Um, another big part of it I wanted to talk about today is structure.gant. It's an extension for structure which allows you to build Gantt charts on top of the hierarchy. And uh, it's a bit of a controversial topic for some people because uh, Gantt is considered to be strictly waterfall thing and uh, everyone is agile these days. Yet it's been number one uh, feature request for structure and we actually started asking people why they really want this. And uh, we identified a number of use cases where Gantt charts are useful even in a more agile setting. So first of all, long-term planning. Uh, that's something everyone still does for larger projects even though you're agile. Well, there might be some exceptions, but most companies will still want to plan their initiatives based on the calendar. They want to have some features delivered by certain dates. Uh, of course, they will need to align with the teams, their vision, but the initial plan still is the long-term plan, which is nicely visualized uh, on the timeline. Another important thing that a lot of people want to see is tracking dependencies. You have multiple teams working together, you need to make sure that uh, they do their work in the right order. Even though they might be planning by sprints, they need to make sure that certain features are done in one sprint and then so that the other team can work on theirs in the next sprint. So again, Gantt chart provides a really nice visualization of dependencies and helps you manage those. Tracking deliverables is another common uh, thing that people want. You want to see when you're going to be done. And again, Gantt chart allows you to visualize that really nicely. You can have the milestones, you can see whether you're making it or not, um, or you can use it to calculate the date when you're going to be done. And again, our Gantt chart, they rely on the Jira data, so uh, the bars that you see here, they all use either Jira uh, estimates, story points, or uh, hours, uh, you can see the progress, etc., um, etc. Et so it really helps you visualize your work on the timeline. Uh, resource allocation is another common problem that a lot of people are solving um, regardless of the methodology they're using and again Gantt chart is a really nice and easy way to show that you can do it on the team level or on the individual person level uh, depending on, on what problem you are trying to solve and then of course there are non-software teams and it doesn't necessarily mean it's a hardware team. We, we see a lot of infrastructure teams, for example, that are rolling out uh, servers and set up everything uh, for new release uh, and they usually do it in a fairly uh, planned way. They can't just be as agile. They need to make sure that things are done in a certain order. So uh, that helps them a lot. And then can charts provide really nice high-level reports. Usually the managers don't care about the details down there. They want to see the big picture. And Gantt chart is an easy way to see where you are right now. Uh, and uh, we've just released version 1.4 where we tried to solve another common challenge. Uh, like I mentioned, the teams are usually working in sprints. They are more agile. Uh, but the business is doing higher level planning. Um, so We've introduced the feature that allows you to visualize certain issues based on their sprint data and then you can have calendar planning uh, above that and see how these two worlds meet. You can see like if it's sprint planned by sprint actually um, corresponds to what the business had planned previously if you're making it, if the feature can be delivered or if uh, something needs to be delayed or the scope should be changed. So again, yet another visualization of your work uh, on the timeline. Um, so to sum it up, uh, what makes our products uh, different from uh, say portfolio and big picture? So our core 
uh, I would say core advantage here is uh, flexibility. So structure is not built with just one specific process or use case in mind. Instead, you can use automation functionality I was showing later earlier to uh, to build the structures. You need to visualize the data you have, so it's not prescriptive at all, and you don't have to adjust your process uh, to get some nice. Uh, visualization of your work and to get some uh, metrics for your work. Um, it's all uh, showing you data in real time, both the fields and the hierarchy, so it's self-updating, so you always have the access to the actual information, and you're actually working with Jira issues. There is no levels of abstraction between uh, the hierarchy you work and your Jira data. And for, for some customers, they really like the fact that uh, they can learn one system, one interface, and then build all kinds of views using that same interface. So I hope that was helpful. That was a really quick overview, but uh, I hope it gives you some idea of what we offer. Uh, you can always contact me uh, with any additional questions, and I'll be happy to answer those. Uh, thanks a lot for listening.